Hello, everybody. It's Chris again from CSS Tricks with video screencast number 12. This is going to be a good one. I have gotten, since I've started doing this, numbers 1, 2, and 3. The very first three I did were about converting a, a Photoshop mock-up into uh, HTML and CSS website. And those were by far the most popular. I'm not sure if they're the most watched, but they're the ones that seems like I get the most email about of people that just said, wow, this really helped me out. It helped me understand how this process works. And I just got a lot of good feedback on those. So uh, I figured I'm not just going to leave it at that. Maybe I'll just do another whole series because since every layout and design is different, uh, but there's all kinds of stuff we could learn from just doing it all over again with a different design. So let's take a look and, and do another series. I'm not sure how many parts it's going to be. It kind of depends on how far we get in this first one. But let's take a look at the design in Photoshop. I have recently redid the header and navigation and stuff on CSS Tricks. So let's just kind of recycle that and take a look at that design and convert that into a... a HTML and CSS website. It's kind of miniaturized. I'm shooting this video at 800 by 600 pixels here, so I thought in order to make the, we'll still get all the, the, the concepts, but this website is just kind of miniaturized, but you'll still uh, see everything. So this is the design. It's going to have a big header up area up here like I have on CSS Tricks. It's got a couple of tabs that are going to have a different, they're going to have rollover states and selected states to to show current navigation. There's going to be some content. This is just a screen cap from one of the articles on CSS Tricks I just dropped in here. Uh, it's, it looks like it's just fading out. You see it's all squished. Um, in a mock-up like this, the header and navigation up top and the footer down below, and I didn't mock up a whole lot of content because this I just needed a, enough of it to, to get a feel for what the, the middle is going to kind of look like, but there's no need to mock up all the content on a whole site. I know this middle area is just going to be expandable, so I just I left it at that enough that I can take a slice out of here and make the, the graphic that I'm going to, that's going to be repeating that I'm going to need, so yep, there we are. So there is a couple of different ways that we could start doing this project. Uh, one of those would be to uh, start drawing in some guides here and just start slicing this thing up into the different images that I know that we're going to need to do this. Uh, that's definitely going to be a part of the process, but I think it's more important, like I did last time, it's a better way to work to, to write write the markup first, write the HTML first in describing what this looks like uh, with code instead of starting with cutting up your images. So I think that just leads to a more semantic website. If you can you can describe those things with tags and then, and then make the images work with those tags, you're going to end up with cleaner, nicer, beautiful code. So let's try and do that first. And uh, the more you do this, the more you can kind of just look at a design like this and then and then kind of describe it with tags, I think. So I'm going to attempt to do that. Maybe we can kind of leave this open partially on the screen here and drag it over and see if we can write at the same time. Let's see if that'll make sense. I'm not sure that it will, but we're going to call this uh, our Photoshop Mockup Conversion. That's what we'll call the the page title for this page and uh, like most websites we ever do around here it's probably going to be centered uh, so let's put that in there usually we call that a page wrap I think that should do us okay um, we're gonna need a header I think I have a feeling that page wrap is going to is going to make use of a background image of this of this texture and and the white and the drop shadow behind it I think that'll be kind of the the expandable mm, actually I'm not sure I'm not sure what we'll do but I know it needs to be centered so I know we're gonna need a page wrap so let's leave it at that I know we're gonna need a, a header that's gonna be I think we're gonna end up keeping that separate that's just that whole top area within the page wrap we're gonna have navigation uh, probably the most common popular way to do that is with a uh, an ordered list. 
it probably won't be the only unordered list that we use on the page. So, and since there's only going to be one of these per page, uh, navigation that is, let's just give it a special ID of nav. That way we can give special CSS hooks to just this unordered list and it won't, won't affect other ordered lists that we might have, like say in the blog posts or whatever. Uh, we're going to need some list items that link to stuff because that's what a menu is. What did we call these? Articles, videos, downloads. So articles. It's wrapping. Is this annoying? Maybe we'll just open it up so you can see the code a little better. And instead of just typing them out, let's just copy and paste the two others. Articles, videos, downloads. That's a nice semantic looking menu, I think. And hmm, we'll have some main content. We may end up with a div for that. And we're going to need a footer. Um, the reason I'm hesitating at all here is because I'm not sure if we're going to end up putting these things in the page wrap or not just because of how it comes down. Let's kind of default to not doing it that way. And we'll have an ID of a footer. Down here, well, we're going to put footer stuff. So I think that pretty well describes this this whole page, believe it or not. There's going to be some, some main content in here, so let's just, for now, we'll put a, a paragraph tag in there. And that's where all the main content will go. Those, there's definitely going to be... Well, let's take a look at the mock-up again real quick. If you go over to the side, there's there's this main content area here and then a sidebar. Lots of sites have sidebars. That's really common, so we're going to need to describe that. We'll give a, make a div for that. Um, but, but, but just this code right here pretty well explains what we're looking at in the Photoshop mock-up. I know it looks just like bare bones code, but there's a lot you can do with that with CSS. We have ourselves a header, which we described. We have a, a page wrap, which is kind of going to wrap this whole middle. It might wrap the whole thing. I'm not, I'm not sure uh, how we'll do that, but we'll run across that bridge when we get to it. So there's a header, the navigation, the main content, and a footer. And, and within the page wrap, there's uh, just some main content and a sidebar area. So just with just those hooks in the CSS we can do a whole lot in getting it to actually look almost exactly like this so okay, now that we have some nice markup we'll move on to the next step so now that we have our nice mockup let's come back and do some of the fun Photoshop stuff here and 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 getting some of those images out of here that we know that we're gonna need I have no guides on this document yet and that's a great way to start to start uh, you know, portioning off some of these these areas. So let's start by drawing some guides. This is all the way to the left in the document, so and all the way to the top. Uh, uh, we're not going to need any more room to the left or or above this. So let's that that that's kind of a nice way to work instead of uh, having a huge Photoshop document with the website that you've mocked up right in the middle of it. Uh, in this case, the website is right up against the left edge because that's all we need. I'm not sure if that made any sense, but we'll drag a guide out um, to the right side of the page, making sure that we're far enough away from the drop shadow that the drop shadow isn't going to get cropped off. Uh, I should mention at this point that one of the cool parts about working with a, a textured background like the one that I use on CSS Tricks is you can kind of cheat. We're going to end up applying this textured background. It's just kind of a repeating background in the in the background of the body element but yet we can use it behind these menu items and up at, up here in this header and where this texture hits this texture it's not always going to be the same we don't have to simulate it pixel perfect because it'll just kind of melt together with the eye let's see if i can jump over to css tricks actually quick and uh and, and show you that kind of fool the eye effect that happens in the header So, yikes. Let's see, where's my... Okay, okay. You see over here to the left side of this tag, 
there's texture behind here, which is a separate graphic from the texture that's behind here. This is, this is being applied to the body element, and this is just part of a larger image. So you can see when I move the web page that that line where those, two, where those two meet is highly visible. But as soon as it stops, they just kind of melt together with your eye. It's kind of a cool Trump Loy effect. And you can achieve that while working with, with textures that are just, that are just you know, rough and, and like this, and that, that they just kind of melt together like that. It's kind of cool. So we're going to definitely take advantage of that while we're doing this too. So, okay, so we got our one guide in there. So the, the whole width of our site ultimately is going to be this width from, from the left side of our photo document out to this guide. That's going to be as wide as we're dealing with. Let's draw some other guides in here for in between the menu items. You know we're going to need to chop those up into different sections, so let's pull those in. I think we're going to only need two because we'll just we'll make this whole area kind of be the clickable area for downloads. I think that's just kind of a smart way to do it. We'll pull one down right on top of articles. Uh, we could get right on it. It doesn't doesn't really matter. We're just no, we're going to need to slice that section. And then let's make the rounded corners. This is you know how I did it. Just a, just a part of the navigation instead of just a, a part of the image. It's just kind of a cheap and easy way to. Uh, make those rounded corners on the top, pull down a guide, and make sure that it's past the point where this rounded corner has straightened all the way out. You know, if I put it right in the middle here, that's going to cause problems for us. It's better if we can get past the curve a little bit so that so that this next area, this area in here, is, is a perfectly straight edge, and that's going to be the graphic that we're going we're gonna to repeat vertically so that it can grow. So it's important that, that this corner gets all the way down to straight so you see some stuff poking up here let's just grab these things and bump it down a little bit oops these two layers bump that down so when we cut it up it it's not there in fact that stuff you know we're not going to be slicing any of that stuff that's just as a visual as you can see where we're kind of headed towards we could even just turn those off um Let's draw another guide similarly at the bottom of the footer, just above where that rounded corner ends up, and that's gonna kind of be where we slice out oops, where we slice out that and use it for the background image of the footer element. So drawing in guides will help you stay consistent. It's good to save at this point so you don't lose those guides. And let's start exporting some images. So the crop tool is really gonna be our friend here and slicing all this stuff up. So um, let's just get started doing that. Um, the first thing we're going to do is start with uh, the texture of the background. Like I said, this is going to be applied to the body element. So let's just grab a chunk over here. You don't want to grab a chunk that's too small with a texture like this because it, you know, there are some some unique little bumps and and valleys and shadows and stuff in this texture that if it's too small of a thing, it's not going to look good repeated. But a chunk this size, I think, I think should look okay. Uh, repeated so you just crop it out so we get a section that's just texture like that and then save for web and devices and uh, you can kind of experiment to see which which format gif jpeg or ping is going to work good for us uh, looks like jpeg is, is looking pretty good and we will save it right into our images folder as the body background Okay, and then if we open up our history palette, there's just too many palettes here to to show them all to you all the time, but there's our history palette, and we can just back up one step to before we cropped and be back to where we started. So let's hide Photoshop and jump back into our code and go into our style. Uh, this is my basic reset where I have a bunch of, you know, margin reset and and reset values. You, if you've been watching these podcasts, you've probably seen this before. But none of it's too important for what we're dealing with right now. I mean, it is important, but it, we don't have to go into too much detail. What we're going to do is apply that image that we just created to the body element. And by default, this will be uh, 
to the top left and repeated. So there's no reason to go on here, but you know, just for fun so you can see, we can just say it's top left repeat. Those are the defaults, but that's okay. Well, let's open up a web browser right away and see if we're doing ourselves any good here. Pop open Safari so you can see and drag that index file that we just saved right on here. And you see what we already got the texture back there. We're already a long way into making this website look like our mock up. I'm going to try to do one more step here before we're going to have to break this into segments. So let's jump back over into Photoshop. And, you know, this, this font up here is, is some versions of Helvetica and stuff. We could try to replicate this look as close as we can with uh, web text, but I kind of like the way that it looks just like that. Let's just leave it as graphic. So we're just going to cut this whole setter, header section out with the crop tool and see how it snaps to those guides that we nicely created and crop that out and we'll save that for web and devices if it doesn't freeze up on me here uh, as a JPEG is you know that's what we started with we can we could explore around a little bit and see how we do I'm thinking JPEG is gonna be our friend here as far as file size you can see that ping uh, Ping 24 is in, in awesome format, supports alpha transparency and all that, but the file sizes are huge, so you can see 78, 78K for a Ping 24 in that case. Wow, that's fun. <laughs> okay. Uh, JPEG. We're going to call this our header. We could call it background, but I don't think we're really going to use it as a background anyway, so let's just call it header. Okay, HTML, header. Mm, I was thinking we were going to do something fancier than we really are, but let's actually just throw it inside the page wrap. And you know what? I don't even know if we need a special div for it because it's just going to be an image. We're not going to drop anything on top of it. So let's just forget that whole div entirely and just make it an image. We're going to call it images header.jpg, and you always specify an alt tag so your code validates and for accessibility reasons. Mockup header and save it. One thing that we should do while we're in Photoshop is get a good handle on what is what is this width that we're dealing with. Command Shift I, I'll bring up our image size palette. 654 wide so that's just going to be the that's going to be as wide as our website ever gets so let's make our page wrap that number of pixels so let's back up in our history palette too so we don't accidentally save the cropped version of that let's save this jump back over to our page wrap and what do we say 654 i already forgot 654 i hope and let's jump back into Safari and reload. And there's that image. It's in our page wrap, so it's centered as I do this. And now you look at that. You can see that cool uh, fool the eye kind of approaches. When, you, when you're going like this, you, I don't know how well this is going to translate into the, the compressed screencast, but I can see it really clearly right now, or right on the bottom of this image. The textures, when you're sliding it back and forth, it's really obvious. You can see where that line is, and then as soon as you stop, oh, those textures just kind of melt together. So that's pretty cool. All right, we're going to pick up the rest of the conversion of this website in probably, probably two more podcasts, so stay tuned for that. Hey, there's a couple of things on the web that I want to point out to you at the end here. Uh, one thing is, oh, look at this header. This is the Real CSS Tricks website and our brand new header design up here. Uh, the very same one we're working on building today, so you should be intimately familiar with this before too long. But the, one of the tabs up here is Forums. They're brand new. We just launched them a couple days ago. 
it is a great place to to get in touch with the CSS community. I, I'm really happy with how they've been going so far. Like I said, they've only been open for about a day and a half. We've had a, a bunch of people sign up. We've had over 150 posts of people talking and needing help with with uh, you know troubleshooting CSS in different browsers and and getting feedback on their designs and talking about all kinds of stuff. So it's been really cool. It's just going to be a great place for y'all to come and talk CSS, talk shop. So uh, the other thing I want to mention is our sponsor, PSD2HTML. That's uh, on the web. That's PSD2, the number 2, HTML.com. Uh, it's, this is a great time to mention the sponsor because they do exactly what we're doing in these podcasts where you're learning to do it for yourself. But these these are the pros. These guys do the exact same thing. You send them a Photoshop document and they send you back code, your your design sliced up into XHTML and CSS. So uh, uh, the real advantage here is I know you're learning to do it yourselves, but they're quick and they do a great job. So this is gonna, a great place to turn to. Uh, if you're in the position where you have a design that you've already designed and, and you needed to get it into an HTML website and fast. I have used them myself. They did a great job on a design I needed to get fast. Uh, what you do is, you, you know, when you, when you upload your PSD to them, They'll get back to. They'll take a look real quick, and they get back to you right away with a bunch of great questions on it. Uh, mine was a, ended up being a fluid width design, and there was a row of buttons kind of along the bottom. And you know, in PS, you know, in your Photoshop document, you can't simulate how you want those buttons to behave because you know it's just it's just a flat design. But I want my design to be fluid. So you know, one of their questions right away was, how do I want those buttons to behave? Do I want them to hang out all the all the way on the left or on the right, or do I want them to space out? as the design grew and shrank you know and that's a great question they need answers to that type of stuff and the only way they can know is to take a look at your design and ask them and they looked really quick and they asked me those questions and I told them I wanted them to be spaced out and they did exactly that and they did a a great job of doing it so I highly recommend PSD to HTML alright until next time see you later bye